It's eight o'clock on a Monday night. Do you know what your hosts are doing? Just kidding. I have no idea why I said that. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Mike here. Today, again, really short sweet. We're going to talk about how to enable SSH for your ESXi host. Now, this is really helpful from a troubleshooting standpoint, but also if you're studying for your VCP or VCTA or anything like that, and you want to play around with the lab and log into your host and issue some ESX CLI commands and that sort of thing, you need SSH enabled. So we're going to jump right into vCenter and do this because this is a really, really quick fix. So let's jump into it. All right, so here we are inside of my vCenter. Now, what I want to do is enable SSH for this host right here, 254.20. Before we do that, let's validate SSH is not enabled. We'll do that in two ways. First, I'm going to try to SSH into it. So we'll open up PuTTY, and I'm just going to try to SSH to that host. I've got that IP in there. Let's go ahead and hit Enter. All right, so we see we get network error connection refused. That's a pretty good indicator that SSH is not enabled, but let's go ahead and validate inside of vCenter as well. To do that, we have our host selected here, so we are going to click Configure over here. From there, we're going to go down to Services under System. Right there we go, Services. We'll click that. All right, right here, we have the SSH service right here, and we can see that it is stopped. And also probably worth mentioning, we have the option here to set a startup policy. So the default is start and stop manually. So in our case, I'm going to go ahead and select it and I will hit start. We should see that that changes to running and it does. Now, if I open up PuTTY and I try to SSH again to this host, let's do that one more time. There we go. We get a certificate warning. This is good. And let's type in our credentials. All right. So we're logged into our host successfully. That's perfect. Now, here's the only problem. If I reboot this host, SSH is disabled. So if I really wanted SSH to be enabled all the time, then what I would have to do is change that startup policy right here. And I can actually do that by selecting this little dot next to SSH and hitting edit, <laughs> hitting edit startup policy. I can't talk today. All right, once we've hit that, what we'll then want to do is, in most cases, hit start and stop with host if, if you want it to come up every time your host comes up. That's what you would have to change. So we could do that. We hit OK. SSH is now enabled every time this host is booted up. It will then be enabled. So that's all there really is to enabling SSH. As you can see, pretty straightforward process. That said, I, one last thing I will mention, if you go back to summary, you will see here that you will get a kind of an informational notification or a warning saying, hey, SSH has been enabled. And that is because in a production environment, you may not want SSH enabled all of the time for security reasons, right? Because it's not terribly difficult to brute force SSH or something like that. But you will get that here and you can suppress it. I would recommend just using it when you need it and dis disabling it as needed. Now, in a production environment, the one thing I'll also add is Ideally, you would have whatever choice you make, either enable SSH or disable it. You would want it kind of standardized across all of your hosts. To do that, you can use something called host profiles. And I actually did a video on using host profiles for this very thing. You can check up at the top here. I'll drop a link there. So if you are interested in learning how to do that, you can do that there. But either way, like I said, pretty short and sweet. I hope you stick around. Make sure you subscribe. Until next time, stay nerdy.